Welcome to episode 6, part A of module 5, Heredity. We're looking at inquiry question 5, can population genetic patterns be predicted with any accuracy? Our syllabus reference for this video, we will look at how data can be collected, recorded and presented when looking at the frequency of data and analysing single nucleotide polymorphism as well as looking at the data analysis from a large scale collaborative project to look at how population genetics is used in conservation management. Our learning intentions for today's video, we will use an equation to solve for allele frequency and genotype phenotype frequency, analyze single nucleotide polymorphism and outline the use of population genetics in conservation management. Allele frequency is a way to measure how often a particular version of an allele appears in a population. To find the allele frequency, we can use the following formula. The frequency of allele is equal to the number of copies of the allele in the population divided by the total number of genes in the population. Let's look at an example. Mendel studied a gene that controls flower color in pea plants. This gene comes in a white allele represented by lowercase w and a purple allele represented by uppercase w. If we look at the two alleles in each plant and count out how many uppercase w copies are present, we find that there are 13. If we count up how many lowercase w copies are present, we find that there are five. This means that the total number of gene copies in the whole population is 18. By convention, when there are just two alleles for a gene in a population, their frequencies are given the symbols P and Q, where P is the frequency of the dominant allele and Q is the frequency of the recessive allele. If we are to calculate the frequency of the dominant allele, that is P, we would divide the number of copies, which is 13, by the total number of genes, which is 18. This would give us an allele frequency of 0.72. To calculate the recessive allele, that is Q, we divide 5 by 18 to get 0.28. The frequency should always add up to 1. Alternatively, you can use percentages with the total percentage being 100%. Genotype and phenotype frequencies can also be calculated and are important for understanding how populations evolve, but they are not the same thing as allele frequency. To calculate the genotypic frequency, we would need to look at the homozygous dominant, homozygous recessive and heterozygous alleles. From the example, it can be seen that there are a total of nine flowers. Of these nine, six have the homozygous dominant alleles, two uppercase W, two have the homozygous recessive alleles, two lowercase W, and one has a heterozygous allele, one of each. To calculate the phenotypic frequency, that is the observed trait, we look at how many of the flowers express the purple trait and how many express the white trait. In this example, there are a total of seven that express the purple trait out of nine, and there are two out of nine that express the white trait. Single nucleotide polymorphism. Polymorphism refers to the presence of different physical traits, that is the phenotype, among individuals in a population. Polymorphisms can result from mutations, which are errors in the DNA replication. One common type of mutation is a single nucleotide polymorphism, or a SNP. It is similar to a typo in the DNA, where one nucleotide, that is the base, sugar and phosphate, is replaced with another. SNPs usually occur during DNA replication where a single nucleotide is incorrectly inserted, creating an error at a specific spot on a chromosome. To be classified as a SNP, this altered DNA sequence must be found in at least 1% of the population. They occur about once in every 100 to 300 nucleotides in our DNA, which has around 3 billion nucleotides in total. SNPs are useful in genetic studies because they may be linked to changes in appearance, enzyme function, disease susceptibility, or drug responses. However, most SNPs are found in non-coding regions of DNA and do not lead to noticeable differences. If they do occur in coding regions of DNA, such as a region that codes for a protein, 
it will be expressed and give rise to new alleles. SNPs are important genetic markers and are used to distinguish individuals and identify traits. A genetic marker is a known DNA sequence at a specific location on a chromosome. There is great variation in genetic markers among individuals within a population, making it easier for scientists to differentiate between them. SNPs are common in humans. The use of population genetics. Genetic similarities and differences within and between species can be observed at the level of physical traits, genes, specific, specific versions of genes or molecules. To understand these differences, scientists conduct studies where they collect and analyse data. This helps them understand how individual populations and species vary. The information gathered is used to predict how well populations might adapt to changes and the chance of surviving in the future. Population genetics is the study of how the collection of genes, the gene pool, in a population changes over time, leading to evolution. The gene pool includes all the genes and the different alleles in a population. Genetic diversity is a variety of genetic traits within a species and it depends on how much these traits can vary. Species with more genetic diversity have a better chance of adapting and surviving. Population genetics combines ideas from Mendel's genetics and Darwin's evolution to explain how and why allele frequencies change in populations, leading to small scale microevolution and large scale macroevolution. By measuring genetic variation over time, scientists can predict which populations are likely to adapt and survive, evolve into new species, or die out. Population geneticists study what causes changes in allele frequencies. For example, they might look at how a change in temperature affects allele frequencies in a population. They use models based on stable populations with Mendelian inheritance and compare them to real populations experiencing different environmental pressures. An example of a large-scale population genetics is conservation management. The main goal of conservation genetics is to help species adapt to environmental changes over time and prevent their extinction. This field uses various methods to maintain biodiversity and protect endangered species by collecting genetic data develop effective conservation strategies. Research shows that species with low genetic diversity are more likely to become extinct. Population genetics is crucial in conservation because it helps manage and study these populations. Methods used in conservation genetics include observing and sampling species in the field to analyze their distribution and abundance, Analyze data using techniques such as SNPs to determine relationships within species and understand how they evolve through selection and mutation. Identifying parts of the genome essential for adapting to the environment, as well as harmful alleles and beneficial mutations. And lastly, studying past extinction events to create models that help conserve endangered species today. And that is the end of episode six, part A. Thank you for watching.